like as a rule of thumb, Crouch R1, R1, and Running R1 are all supposed to have the same poise damage. It's not always completely true, but in like 90% or maybe even 95% of cases, that's going to hold, uh, hold still. Same thing with the R2s, like Standing R2 and then Running R2 should technically do the same poise, amount, uh, poise damage. Okay, here I feel like that could be a good area to use this. Story of gang carries. I play and save. Well, that was the host. Oh, that went true still. What do you think about power stance, great swords, great axe, and great hammers after 1.10? Uh, I have not played much with them, Captain Waffles. One thing I've noticed is that indirectly, uh, a lot of these got nerfed. Like, for instance, Power Stance, Great Hammers, right? I really picked my hammers. <laughs> so basically, the, this crouch attack was like one of the best reasons to use uh, Great Hammers. Because that's very fast and it does like over 100 poise damage. Although now, this did not get buffed poise damage wise. So it still does the same amount of poise damage as before. That means that it went from an attack that did high poise damage. That was like one of the fastest. And now it's not one of the fastest because all the weapons and now, now poise break. And so you have better choices for attacks that always poise break. And so that kind of put it back a notch. And that's kind of like the case with a lot of these. Like, same with double uh, great axe. Like, this attack was pretty much the bread and butter that made the setup kind of shine a little bit. But because it does not have full poise damage as opposed to some of these small weapons R1, for instance. Uh, not this. Because it doesn't have, like, uh, max poise damage, like, say, a straight sword R1. It's, it's not going to be as reliable. It's still good, but it's going to pretty much be, like... Uh, uh, like it's it's not going to shine as much just because everything else poise breaks and it's the same thing with the site like site did not get nerfed but like uh it got indirectly buffed by like now that flame strike always uh poise breaks now you have a better roll catch with let's say flame strike but it got nerfed indirectly because now that every weapon poise breaks the side does the side does not stand amongst the few weapons that poise break with like a fast attack so it's like, it's all indirect stuff, but that changes where the weapon fit in, let's say, a tier list. Off and uh, hand axe feels great, better than dagger. I actually disagree with that, because, um, like, all the new options that poise break on the off end that are not, like, uh, rapier, I don't think are as good, because they're much, much more easily reactable. Like, that's kind of the whole point of the off end weapon, it's to have that threat that's fast, that's hard to react to. If you don't have that, it's not much of a point. And that hand axe, even though it's fast, it's not fast enough. Oh, I didn't think it would go in there, it just didn't care. Come on, boss. It's gonna hurt. God, that Black Flame Tornado, though. Jesus, man. It's so strong in invasions. That range. <laughs> I would much rather the boss not be there, but... We just do it what we have. I do not trust that boss, man. I feel like we're gonna get knocked by that boss. High IQ? Yeah, L2s are actually kind of insane now, indeed. It's funny because who would have thought that increasing poise damage for everything? Like, we all would have uh, thought that small weapons would be like the all and be all. 
but <laughs> it's mostly the ash of wars that, <laughs> that are like extremely strong and like that seem to be like the most problematic overall it's not even the weapons so far like some weapons got really good don't get me wrong but like when i watch these like you know storm stomp flame strike black flame tornado that one shot you know what i mean like a lot of these are like whew, that's strong uh all right so since we're getting uh, some of the pc crowd here i'm sure you guys will be very happy to know that at the start of the stream we tested storm snob but we also tested radiant baldishin's blessing and for those of you wondering it did not get any changes but um before patch 1.10 the only thing that could reliably poise break a baldishin's blessing or radiant baldishin's blessing was pretty much a colossal like that was the only thing that could poise break it now after 1.10 because weapons got a lot more poise damage there's actually much like there's more plays that you can do to to break it uh for instance any r any medium size r2 like even one-handed straight sword r2 will always poise break it um any any two-handed weapon of like the size of of something like halberd or like like a bigger that will also poise break it like crouch double lance that will poise break radiant baldishin so as you're seeing like there's actually a lot more options now that will always break um baldishin which is kind of nice really so that means it's by default it's not going to be as oppressive as before all right sorry i was not paying attention i knew it was mongoose though so i wasn't too worried That's a combo, by the way, which is extremely nasty. Oh. Yeah, Katar is for real, though. Like, uh, Katar is hella nasty now. Storm Stomp and Endure feel like a necessity now. Honestly, against stuff like that, like, it can be extremely dangerous. Like, if you're fighting, like, a good player that mixes it up and that's, like, used to mixing up like these timings well because it's not like you just have like a running attack right that running r2 poise break on both r2s like both swings of the r2 so if you get clipped by one you get comboed by the other and it also combos into another r2 so you can mix the timing not just with that but with this and with neutral r2 too so even though those are all reactable by themselves when used by a good player that has experience with the weapon the mix-ups are actually quite dangerous. Which I'm not... Uh, I haven't played really with it much, so... Um, I don't know, like, the timing for everything. But, like, um... Here, for instance, let's just, uh... Be big brain and... Dude, Black Flame Tornado is, like... Why would you even bother going for criticals anymore, you know? Back in Dark Souls 3, like, to get that sort of damage... <laughs> even, like, a Leto and a Gundir, like, you, you needed to land, like, two or three to get that damage. <laughs> like, now it's like... <laughs> why would you go for parries? Why would you go for jumping attacks? Like, why would you go for all of that? Just Black Link Tornado and invasions, man. You just need to land one, that's it. You just need to land one, one good one, and the invasion's over. You know, fuck all that hard stuff. Just go around the corner, like, get yourself chased, go around the corner, and just start a Black Flame Tornado, and that's it. It's GG. It's actually so easy to win invasions doing that. I mean, it goes both ways, don't get me wrong. Like, you can get clipped by it, and it's GG for you too, but, like, as an invader, it just gives you, like, such a strong, like, retaliation button. Stormhawk Axe is also really good, but I have not even played with it yet. That's how crazy this patch has been. It's a good noob slayer. Yeah, I agree. Like, you don't... Well, you can still catch a good player with it. Like, um... If you, like, really time your trade well... I guess it would work... Oh, it's, it's another one of these, dude. Dragon is... Honestly, guys, um... If the guy doesn't follow me on the other side where Black is going... I'm not playing these, uh... I'm not playing these, uh... These, these scrubs that just sit where the... The desync dragon is. 
I've heard my I, I've learned my lesson. It's not worth it. I'm not gonna encourage that sort of stuff. They don't deserve to play, honestly. Because if you start playing these guys, like more people are gonna start doing it. But if you just sever every time, like no one's going to play with them. They can sit where their their little dragon is. Right now, these are the stats we have. Uh, ideally, though, like if you want to play with a character like I'm doing, like go 137, 135. Get yourself that 50 fate. Get yourself a bit more endurance, and then you'd pretty much have like a solid fate build that has all the tools required for every situation. I'm still kind of, I'm so stubborn. Like I'm, I'm always sneaking the great bow on like every build and like getting the min minimum requirement for a quick swap. But that's not really the way to go about it. Like you should probably, even if you're gonna have that great bow, you should probably go for like straight up just 20 strength instead. Get those four points, put it in somewhere else. But I just like to be able to quick swap it. So it's actually not even optimal to go like I'm doing, really. Use our tree great bow for the meme. You know what's crazy? Our tree great bow does so much less damage than Gollum, even on a fate build. I don't know what they did to that stat spread for our tree great bow. Like, it's really useless, even on a, on a, a strength fate, which is kind of crazy. I'll tell you what. This game, dude. <laughs> I'll miss my Black Flame Tornado on the Dex build. Well, I guess I have Storm up. Also, I've played a little bit against Hand of Millennia. You know, all these Ashes of War that are basically like a one-shot or almost. I say one-shot or almost because... I mean, technically, if you stack buff, you can definitely make them one-shot. But, like, all in all... I don't know if they should do as much, like... I actually agree that they should do a lot of damage, like it's fun having a nuke option, but I'm not sure I would make these like one shot, because I feel like making them one shot is a bit overkill for like one mistake, because even, even in a duel versus a good player, it's actually not impossible to get clipped by that at any moment in the fight, whether it be a quick swap or like the other player happened to time the startup of the Ash of War while you were doing an attack, they tank it. And then you just get punished for the whole thing. That has not happened to me yet, but that happened like prior to uh prior to the patch for sure. Insane gaming. I steal. I think you were right though that the, the twin blade does have eye armor on it. Why did I have that though? Wrong uh wrong tally for this. I'll take that. What? No! Oh my god! What? I did not mean to do that! That was supposed to be a knife, dude! Oh my god! This is so... That was supposed to be a knife! What the fuck? Oh my god! And now I lost my physic too? <laughs> Mary, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I'm pulling out the great ball. Oh my god, dude. The biggest BM? That was accidental. <laughs> That was supposed to be a throwing dagger, man. <laughs> insane game, dude. Actually insane. Oh my god, that was amazing. I didn't forget about Cypher Pada. I honestly feel like Qatar is better than the options that... Uh, that don't have, like, a custom Ash of War that you can put on. Simply because, like, Storm Stomp is going to be way more useful to get out of situations. Like, it's basically, like, look at it this way. Like, it would be as in the Cypher Pada is purely offensive, whereas here I have a strong defensive option. So this is technically stronger overall. It's harder, it would be harder to deal with with someone that has Qatar and Storm Stomp than someone who just has Cypher Pada. It says that the host is close, but we don't see him. I wonder if he's like in one of those trees there. Whoa! What the fuck? Did you guys see that? Like, the screen skipped. 
I don't know if you guys noticed there, but like the whole screen skipped and now the host is appearing somewhere else. What the hell? That was so weird. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but like the screen like skipped a beat. No, no, that was not the stream. Like that was like, like the game actually skipped like that. Like it had some weird fucking, I don't know what that was. That was so weird. What the hell is that? Um... Let's try... I'm not sure, actually. I'm kind of curious because I want to try different things, but... Let's try breaking the guard with this. I don't know how much stam he actually had. PSGS in the menu, such an old schooler. Dude, I like PSGS even more because it feels a lot more fair to use, yet like nothing really has been taken away from them. You just have to space with them. So it feels so much more rewarding to play. Like I had some idiots like in the comments, like like one vid where we use PSGS and like, oh you know, patch drop, like how do you like the patch so much? And well all you do is play with PSGS. Like it's like <laughs> bro, like people are that dumb man. But yeah, even though, like, um, we still mainly play with other things, but even though that's the case, like, it's so much more fun to play with PSGS now because everything else stuns you. It feels a lot harder and a lot more fair to play. And I love it. While it's still, you know, it's still strong enough to be very good, too. Oh, that's Mongus, I just realized. The of War is so bad. I think we're lacking like uh, bullet options though. Like uh, what I mean by that is like projectiles. God damn it. I hate that spot. And you also, you always have to keep in mind the whole reason this whole 137, 139 uh, exist is because 125 exists without people that actually play at 125 this level doesn't exist people are going to be playing at 168 where they catch the 150 still but they also catch the um right. but they also catch the people that are higher level i'm surprised that they all waited like that it's like you always get this sort of arms race for levels. That's why like someone needs to put like his foot on the ground and say, all right, well, I'm just going to be staying at that level. And that just cuts the whole loop completely. That's why in Dark Souls 3, like we were staying at, at, at 125 for like most of the time. Like sometimes we go like a bit higher because I too like like to dabble into dumb shit as well. But just like how we use a lot of the broken stuff even though we know it's broken but usually that takes a big brain to understand that i don't know why but because let's be honest like the hardest part of invasions are not 
people that are your level. It's the overleveled phantom. It's always been like that. Um. Let's use. Let's actually use this first. I definitely missed the strength build damage on the Great Ball. Just like that. 